As businesses and society embrace digitalization, pressure mounts for telcos to run their networks in a resilient way and to deliver high quality services. But how can they achieve this? Well, they're also aiming to reduce costs and operate in a more agile way. And what is the role of cloud native on this path? To find out more, I'm now joined by Stephen Terrell, who is a senior expert for automation and management at Ericsson. Hi, Stephen, welcome. So let's start with the journey towards cloud native in the telecommunications industry. Where exactly are we? Thanks, Tony. If we, if we think about this from the four aspects that we talk about in the cloud native transformation journey, we talk about the technology and the infrastructure, we talk about the application design, we talk about the ways of working, and we talk about management and orchestration. There's been a massive shift on the technology side, but we're yet to realize the value. One observation is that on the HCP and IT industry, they've moved, for, they've moved forward with looking at the objectives that they want to achieve, the way of working they want to achieve, and evolve the technology accordingly. Where in the telco industry, what we've done is we've taken that technology, but we haven't yet changed the ways of working. Of course, we are working with improvements within the current ways of working. We've introducing um, in-service software upgrade with ISSU, and there are, and there are quite uh, significant improvements along those lines. But we, we don't think we'll achieve the, 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 the cloud native benefits to this completeness if we don't change the, way of, change the ways of working. So there's more to be done. You've described uh, where we are as an industry and that there is more to do. But can you elaborate more on this and what more is actually required? Yeah, so as I was hinting at there, it's, it's a lot about the ways of working and this comes into the management and or, or, orchestration there. If we take a parallel or analogy for a, a moment there, and if you look at the film industry, when I used to rent a video, I would go down to a shop, I would uh, look at the selection of content that was available, rent that content, go home and watch it. But there's been a transformation in the technology that's enabled streaming, which has enabled people to be able to select the movies from home, whether it's by a subscription approach or whether it's via pay-per-view, uh, and watch that in a more flexible, more dynamic way. But imagine if they hadn't changed the way of working. I would, would have still had to go down to the shop, select the content, get some type of credentials to watch that, go home and watch that with streaming. And that wouldn't be taking advantages of what that technology has to offer. We will not achieve the value of the cloud native transformation if we don't start moving towards smaller smaller deliveries. We also have to be more flexible in the deployment of the software, in what we deploy where, what we run where, and also when deploying new functionalities, be able to reuse what's already existing. As we move towards this more continuous way of working, you will realize that the software becomes more capable. And, and it's important to realize the separation between the realization management or the software lifecycle management and the functional management. Well, can you expand on what is meant by a separation of the software lifecycle management from the functional lifecycle management? Thanks, Tony. It's a great question there. If we look at the realization management or the software lifecycle management, it's about deploying the new software. It's about upgrading that software. It's about making sure that that software is is actually healthy and running and running. So we'll be doing some some different health health checks there. This is something that is uh, common to the entire software industry. So it's leveraging the tooling that's uh, the tooling of that that the whole software industry and that ecosystem there. But as we deploy that software, it becomes more capable. We start to want to be able to activate new features. Um, and, and that software actually has a specific purpose. This brings us on to what the functional lifecycle management is about. Now, this is quite specific to actually what this software is, is for. So this is quite specific to the telecom industry, whether it's a network function or OSS software or VSS software. It's also specific to the, uh, the other parts of the industry, whether it's Microsoft Exchange or, or, or whatever. So that's about activating the new new capabilities of software, the new features. That's about configuring it for the service that it's that it's that it's there for. That's about assuring that that service is meeting the end requirements. Of course, when we activate the new features, we also have to be subject to commercial agreements, like the right to use there. But we can say fundamentally, the software lifecycle management or the realization management is is leverages the scale of the entire software industry where the functional management is about the value that the CSPs provide. And what do you see that the leading telcos are doing in their own transformation to cloud native? The leading CSPs, of course, are continuing to work with the latest when it comes to the technology and the infrastructure and continue to take the cloud native applications. But they're very much they start to shift their focus onto 
the ways of working in order to be able to optimize and maximize the automation in the software lifecycle uh, man management there. They're doing this by starting with a small passionate team in a smaller problem space. They don't try to solve everything at, thing at once. And this small passionate team um, is uh, really focusing on how they can optimize the, maximize the automation in the software lifecycle management. And they can also um, challenge this, the, uh, the status quo, the, 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 the traditional ways of doing things there. In doing so, because they're looking at the, uh, the, the changes and they're looking at the changes of the ways of working, they're also engaging with their vendors to work through this journey. And finally, what else do operators need to consider? To realize the value of the cloud native transformation, the, the CSPs need to invest in transforming their ways of working. They need to do this by articulating what they want to achieve. They need to start with a small passionate team in a dedicated area that can, that can challenge the existing, uh, existing approach and learn the best ways of, of working here. They also need to engage and work with their, with their vendors in doing so. When they're going through this journey, they're going to also work with the separation of the functional management from the software realization management there. When they've taken these learnings, they need to work out to, to scale these learnings internally but also work with their partners to be able to scale this into the telco industry. In this way, we can not only leverage the scale of the software industry for the software, so for the software lifecycle management, but also scale that within the telecommunication industry. Stephen, it's been a pleasure speaking with you on the cloud native journey for telcos. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tony. It's been a pleasure.